Master Emerald is where it belongs. But Angel Island is still falling. This doesn't make any sense. Maybe... Those Chaos Emeralds... That I brought back with me... Have something to do with what's happening. I'll take them to Sonic for his advice. What? <sighs> Guess Eggman learned his lesson. Yep. And maybe I'll take another vacation somewhere. Tails, did you find the tornado too? Never mind that. Get up and follow me. Angel Island is falling again. Hey, no way. Who blew it this time? Oh, I don't know, but we better hurry. Oh, well, that done and over with. Hello, welcome back for one last time to Sonic Adventure. At least one last time for the main portion of the game. Still got some extra videos I want to do sometime in the future, but for now, this is it. This is the Super Sonic story, a special story that you unlock after clearing all the other characters' stories. And it's basically just an extension to Sonic's story with a bit of running around, some more story shenanigans, and a final boss. It's also not something that, like, Unlike every other story, this one can just be replayed infinitely, like, as if, you know, basically, like, if you start this, then, like, beat it, and you can just replay it normally, see all the cutscenes and all that jazz. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. Anyway, let's head on over here. Get ourselves a little more exposition. Sonic, uh, sorry. Knuckles, and Eggman, what happened here? He stole my Chaos Emeralds, and Chaos is still alive. What? I like how the entire purpose of Knuckles getting those Chaos Emeralds is just to have them all link conveniently in one spot. At least all six of them that he had, and suddenly Eggman has all of his energy back. Chaos is a fearsome beast. If he gets that last Chaos Emerald, we're done for. No need to explain. We'll get on it. Tails? Right. What? Oh, jeez. I also enjoy the Eggman's line there is very obviously recycled from one of his battle clips. Little bits like that kind of make it obvious that this game, despite being the lavishly budgeted uh, Dreamcast launch title, was still rushed and very obviously didn't have enough budget for what they wanted to do. I also love how it is blatantly made to call his dad this horrible, horrible person just for the sake of having him be horrible. 
can't believe the morals of this children's video game are so black and white like that. I also find it kind of interesting that there's only six emeralds this time. Not counting the master emerald, of course. Oh wait, no, there, there actually are s no? Honestly, it's kind of hard to tell at this point, because <laughs> they're spinning around. But it does definitely look like there's only six. Uh, let me see if I can get a better look from here. Oh, no, they're not modeled from here. Never mind. That wouldn't help at all. Uh, excuse me? I probably shouldn't be making amateur mistakes like that since I had a failed recording before this. No, no. Wait up. Uh, that would be why I made that mistake. That always gets me. Sonic, wake up. Uh, <laughs> I was on a snooze cruise, I guess. Good thing you're okay. You just saw the conk out there. <laughs> That line also gets me just because it very obviously cuts off before he's finished talking. Uh, lead the way. It should still be on board the tornado too. All right. Um, I guess I should bring up a lot of people like to give the adventure games shit for their writing, and some people will say that oh, they should have writing more like colors, and like, for one, that's a stupid idea because. Like, I don't, is it just me? Am I the only one who thinks that Sonic writing has actually gotten worse since they decided to make him just a normal-ass cartoon character? Like, the writing in the adventure games isn't good by any means. It's, at best, stupid enough to be funny. But I don't know. Once they make him a normal-ass cartoon character just taking nothing seriously... I don't know, I just don't like the writing in that at all. I Again, the writing in Adventure 1 and Adventure 2 is bad, but it's bad in a way that's funny. I don't know, when they started trying to make Sonic funny, it just kind of had the opposite effect to me. Also, wasn't that ever behind glass?
I wasn't just dreaming. That monster is a real menace. So who's ready to see Eggman get owned? I like the no lasers being fired, even though Vover's sound effects meant to imply that there are lasers being fired. Also, how did he defy his master? This is literally what you wanted him to do. <laughs> I've had enough. Who do you think you are, anyway? Oh, it's you. The one who sealed chaos in the Master Emerald. Tikal. Did Tikal ever actually say her name in any of the flashbacks Sonic had? In the Master Emeralds, along with Chaos's. Now he's filled with anger and sadness. And if it goes on, he'll eventually destroy the world like he did before. Check out that low res ass ground texture. Look, yeah, I would like to see a mod that just fixes up some of the, like environmental textures a little just to make them higher res while still making them fit with a Dreamcast style. Because again, I hate how the DX version looks, but. This all looks really weird blown up to 720p. <laughs> also, this cutscene just abruptly going right to big is my favorite fucking thing. Here, take this. Well, actually, it's second only to how much of a goddamn ass pull this entire cutscene is. their real power as much as i hate to admit it i think tails is right about this Go Sonic! Yeah, Sonic! Go fun fact about this chanting by the way um apparently this came from a concert that i think like either sega or the band that did this game's theme music uh one of them held like it came from the audience reaction to that concert like it's literally a recording of the audience reaction and i think that is funny so, hey we got ourselves the titular supersonic so here we have the final boss of the game, Perfect Chaos. And this is honestly kind of a surprisingly easy boss, but I think it's probably like... I don't know, it's a lot better of a final boss than you would have expected given the rest of the bosses in this game. If only because it actually like uses some of the skills you've been learning throughout the whole thing. Which is more than I can say for a final boss of a game's sequel. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. But I don't know, it's a surprisingly fun boss. For what it is. Basically you're just trying to keep up speed. And um... You want to have enough speed built up to where once you get to Perfect Chaos's Fingo? Uh, Sonic will reach his brain, and the brain is his weak spot. Which, of course, is why you want to do that. It's not particularly hard to do it, but you can mess it up kind of easily. Um, 
The rings do actually go down in this fight, though, and you're technically invincible for this fight until you run out of rings and stop being supersonic. And that's the only way you can die, technically, which is part of why this boss fight is kind of easy compared to what it could be. But, um, there's another thing about this fight that I think is kind of annoying, and it's something that I've actually started to fix on my own, in a sense, um, by installing a mod someone else made. And, yeah, it didn't reach a brain this time. So, this fight's kind of infamous for the fact that between the two phases, there's different songs playing, and this song, the main theme of the game, is actually supposed to play first. And afterwards, it plays the kind of generic doomsday theme that you heard in the first phase. And yeah, this phase is where it starts getting kind of tricky. I think I have enough built up for this? No. Okay. But yeah, and the way the music's handled normally makes this fight a little anticlimactic. I have a mod installed that reverses the order to something a little more climactic. AKA this. Yeah, makes the fight a lot better. And there we go! With that, my friends, the game is done. Hey, I'll play with you some other time. Yeah, this is kind of like a series of things that you can do to make anything hype without really even trying, and it's play the main theme during a final boss, play the main theme during the ending, make the final chapter of the game just the name of the game, or the subtitle of the game, or whatever. All that is an easy way to make something feel way hyper than it really is. And to enhance it, if it actually is already pretty hype. Which is why I propose we should make a mod to call the Supersonic story, instead of Supersonic, Sonic Adventure. DX. Director's Cut. For the Nintendo GameCube. They stayed alive for generations and now live peacefully with humans. Fighting's over, harmony's restored, and life goes on. Thank you so much.
All's well that ends well, right? Tales of the city is destroyed. Tales. The city's destroyed and people are dead. And those who didn't die in this lost their homes. Now's not the time. And well, that, my friends, is Sonic Adventure. And, yeah. Closing thoughts on the game. A lot of people, nowadays at least, I guess let's start from the beginning. So, when this game came out, it was pretty well received. It wasn't like treated as the most amazing game in existence, but people generally saw it as a pretty fun platformer. And it is. But nowadays, people have kind of gotten in their head that the game hasn't aged that well. And honestly, that's just a... That's an expression I honestly hate. Like, people tend to see it as, oh, this game is kind of weird in some ways, therefore it was never actually good, or it, like, got worse with time, which, it's a video game. Nothing just gets worse with time, I feel like. Unless it's, like, honestly, someone's gonna say something like, oh, well, do those racist old cartoons not age poorly? And look, that's not a case of something getting worse over time. That's a case of nowadays people are more aware of that sort of thing and they start to realize, oh yeah, that was actually really bad. Because like racism didn't suddenly start being bad in the 90s. Okay. It's just that people started to realize it was bad. And, like, I don't know, when people talk about how Sonic Adventure is this horrible game, they always, like, nitpick these, like, tiny little problems it has, and, like, blow the few major problems it has out of proportion. Like, oh, this game's a buggy mess. I went out of my way to make everything destroy itself. And, like, yeah, cool, dude. I play games to enjoy them, so go away. And like, I don't know. Sure, Sonic Adventure has problems. It's not an amazing game. It's like a 7 out of 10 at best. But I still think what this game does good, and just the good things about it in general, are good enough to where it's still worth playing. It's still a fun game, even in 2019, despite how some parts of it may not be as, like, perfectly fine-tuned as a lot of more modern games are. It's a game with heart. Like, yes, it's a Rush Dreamcast launch title, and Sonic was made as a product of marketing, blah blah blah, whatever. Look, this is a game that I can frequently look back to and think, yeah, this is fun. It's like, it's stupid, but it's fun. I don't know, I feel like it's a kind of something a lot of people tend to take for granted with a lot of older games. Like, if something is old and has a few problems, maybe it's a little janky. A lot of people will look at that and think, oh, the game is bad because of that. Completely ignoring everything that said game does right. Because, like... Every time I hear someone shit talk Sonic Adventure, it's always like the one talking point of, uh, it's kind of buggy at times. And like, yeah, it is. Sometimes. And? Still has fun mechanics to play around with. Still has fun level design. Still has a story that is stupid and bad, but is funny. And I think that's worth something. I think Sonic Adventure is worth something, even today. I'm rambling. Whatever. Uh, see you guys for the next video game let us play thing.
eggs and bacon.